Today, Greg Mm -hmm. is going to lead us through primal scream. No, sorry, primal movement. (laughs) Uh, And and uh, before we get to our guest, uh, good morning, Vincent Jim. Um, Tell me, uh, how's uh, uh, how are things at the co-op? Oh, things are going well at the co-op. Still very very busy. Curbside uh, pickup for all is is working great. Uh, Awesome. And uh, the rounded up at the register this this past uh, month. It was the uh, live and let live uh, rescue farm, and they're at about twenty five hundred on the month. So, oh, awesome. um, donations to that program have actually um, fallen off quite a bit because the uh, it's just that we we have less customer flow. But when customers are in the store, they're um, they have uh, considerably more in their basket. But mm-hmm. um, and then also the curbside pickups a little bit uh, uh, I guess a little bit more awkward to be. Um, asking the question, do you want to round up? But uh, the, the program that started last April um, is, is uh, very close to having raised $50,000 uh, um, for wow. local nonprofits. So the program still going very, very well. Um, and today, uh, if people are looking for a, uh, something for lunch or dinner, they start rotisserie chickens at the uh, grab-and-go. So Ooh. day one Ooh. for rotisserie chickens Ooh. at the Concord Food Co-op. Oh wow, and and you know the the, the twenty five hundred is still uh, the donations for nonprofits have fallen off across the board. So if somebody walks in with twenty five hundred, that is a godsend, Greg. Um, yeah, it, it is, and, and and to your point, donations haven't uh, just fallen off, but the uh, um, events, you know, they, the the right. nonprofit sector very much depends on. Uh, um, hosting fundraising events, and, and those have just come to a screeching halt yep. with really no idea when to redo them. I think uh, most uh, not, most uh, nonprofits are just looking to uh, 2021 at this point. So if you have a favorite uh, nonprofit that you support, I think they, the vast majority of them could use your support now more than ever. Oh, abso- absolutely. Well well said. Uh, who is who is your the recipient of Rounded Up next month? Uh uh, Equality uh, Health uh, Center on uh, Main Street. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, they were uh, very uh, – um, I wasn't that familiar with the organization, but they uh, had a, a ton of votes. So uh, it was last August that every time you shop, you were able to uh, uh, place a vote for the nonprofit of your choice. There were probably 60 on the board, um, and, and that was one of the, the top 12. Well, and, and nice. you know, it's incumbent upon you. Uh, it's incumbent upon us. Uh, during this time to shine the spotlight as much as we can on the nonprofits uh, in terms of dollars or just attention to to remind people that the issues that created these nonprofits still exist and, and they still need your help, as you pointed out. So whether you give, whether you volunteer, or at least as long as we can keep talking about it, uh, that's a huge help. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And, yeah, they, they always have the opportunity to um, – they. Uh, Usually have a rack card uh, at the uh, Concord Food Co-op that, that provides information about them, and uh, uh, it's also a link on our website where the rounded up of the register program is. So we try to, you know, provide as much exposure to the organization uh, as we can during their uh, their spotlighted month for them. Excellent. So uh, today you've got uh, Jim and Vincent. Um, what a primal movement? What is that? Walking like a caveman? What am I doing? You know, I don't know either. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, it was Jim's uh, suggestion uh, to have this as a topic, and I said, I'm not sure what it is. I, I, I have this, uh, <laughs> you know, idea, but I don't know how close I am. And, uh, you know, right about now on a humid day today, I don't know if it's just about going and finding a cold cave and hiding in it. So I, I'm very anxious to, to, to hear uh, um, what primal movement is, is uh, uh, all about. And uh, they, they both uh, are very – active in that uh, um, area of wellness, and so I'm, I'm anxious to hear exactly what it is uh, Jim and Vincent are doing. Vincent, a multidisciplinary movement teacher guide, currently working toward obtaining a master's degree in clinical mental health counseling and dance movement therapy. Do the two of those go hand in hand, Vincent? They do. They do. It's essentially it's a, it's a two-for-one deal. So, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so it's not, it's not like, you know... Uh, uh, this is my this is my main course, and this is a sub, but they actually go together. 
Yeah, so the, the actual master's is in, uh, is in CMHC, so the Clinical Mental Health Counseling, and then it's a, a certificate program for the dance movement therapy. Oh, okay. nice. But ideally they would coincide, you know, with a, you know, individual practice or a group practice, yeah. All right. Jim well, Reedy, Jim, teaching yoga med- uh, meditation for the uh, past 25 years, former attorney. Are you ever a former attorney? Or you're always an attorney, aren't you? I'm always an attorney in recovery. Okay, there you go. There we uh, go. Hey, look and, at that. And a Cochrane Food go. Co-op board member. His mission is to help individuals live their healthiest, happiest, and fullest lives possible. Uh, in addition to yoga, he also leads workshops and retreats in conscious communication, men's work, love you, man, couples work, and wait for it, mindful improv mindful. comedy. Yeah, we Thank got Thank you. Well, wow. so I was going with that little pregnant pause about there. Timing, there yep. you go. There you go. Uh, you can <laughs> get more at nhyogacenter.com. Yeah, so, so that was they, about nine months pregnant. That was thank you. very pregnant. <laughs> well, hey, we're all about the drama here. Come on, Jim. I know, but you know what? Actually, Vincent, let's right now. You're starting to hear in the news, uh, you know, not only just about coronavirus, but about mental health being affected by having to stay at home, having to stay secluded. So, mm-hmm. uh, really, you guys are kind of we're talking about this at the right time. Yeah, I, Ooh, yeah. I, I think so. And I think that, I think the practice that we're going to talk about today, uh, in, you know, it, you can do it indoors, but it encourages movement outside. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the issues that people are facing right now is there is there's definitely a fear or apprehension of wanting to spend time outside and in nature. So, mm-hmm. you know, hopefully we can encourage people to do that, you know, safely and, uh, in a, from a social distancing standpoint, but also to, you know, for their mental and physical well-being. And, and how? How does that help my physical? And I mean, I understand the the movement involved, but how does it help? How does it help? Well, I mean, there's a lot of studies now that show the correlation between physical well-being and, and mental wellness, right? So we tend to look at the mind and the body as separate, but essentially it's one whole unit, right? Mm-hmm. So one is going to impact the other. So I know for myself, you know, I have a I have a daily movement practice, and I know that when I don't tend to myself in that way with that movement practice, if I miss it or if it lacks in some way, then I find that my, my mental well-being also sort of suffers. Are you sitting in the lotus position right now? I am not. I'm actually, I just, I, I just finished my morning mobility practice, so I'm actually pacing around my apartment. Oh, okay, nice. okay. Because <laughs> I've seen you do that, and it's like, wow, that must hurt, but okay. Um, I don't know how you, you do it. You're, it. you're just limber, man. I, I, I you know, uh, Jim, you've been teaching yoga and, and meditation, and some people, you know, yoga, eh, okay, what is this? But they've been doing it for, what, 2,500 2, years, so it's not a new concept. No, it's not new age at all. Some people say it's at least 5,000 years old. Oh, um, wow. But, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a very natural way to move in our bodies and be in our in our bodies Mm -hmm. just as the animal movement that we're going to talk about today the primal movement very natural very organic it's not a new phenomenon the fact that we're rediscovering it so so we okay we're rediscovering it yoga and meditation and primal movement but again as you pointed out they could have been they quote unquote i could have been doing it for up to five thousand years but they didn't start what they they didn't start consciously saying, "Hey, we're going to do this for our physical and mental health," uh, but or did they? I don't know. Well, I and again, like just to kind of go back to what I said previously, I think that I think particularly as it applies to yoga, I think there was an understanding of the mind body connection, and so I think if you look at a lot of older yogic texts, they don't talk about the mind and body as two separate entities, right? So I think the idea of, of reaching heightened states of consciousness through movement was something that was always there. So maybe they didn't have the, necessarily the language to describe it in the ways that we would today, you know, utilizing things like scientific studies. But I think the awareness was, was something that was always present. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. And I think, you know, and I, I think I, it's really funny how something physical can help your mind focus. You know what I mean? It's not just like, yep. okay, my mind can go off and do something else because I'm being physical right now. No, the physicality of what it is that you guys do it brings your mind into focus, and isn't that a wonderful thing for a few minutes every day? Oh, yeah, can, for can, sure, without can a doubt. And I mean, just, if you about, look at it from a, a neurological standpoint, I mean, we're talking about 
you know, physical movement releasing certain chemicals in the brain mm -hmm. that help to improve things like cognition, help to improve things like to combat depression, to increase our capacity for joy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, for me, so, so uh, what is, what oh, is I'm the sorry. actual primal movement? Yeah. What, what are you, what is the movement or what are you doing? Uh, what does it consist of? Well, I'll say just a little bit and then we'll hand it over to Vincent because I think he's done a little more research than I have on this. But, uh, Peter, you were not too far off when you suggested that it was walking like a caveman, <laughs> walking walking like various animals, uh, moving like animals move. Moving like we were designed originally to move. If you think of us as being descended from apes or, or monkeys or chimpanzees, uh, holding on to tree limbs, swinging from tree limb to tree, climbing trees, uh, yeah, just moving on all fours as opposed to just on uh, being bipedal, moving on just two two legs. Huh. So, uh, Vincent, go ahead. You've you've shared, you've uh, done a little more research, I think, than I have. Yeah, and and I, I think Jim, I think you did a really good job of describing it. And I, you know, I think just to, just to kind of create a little context, you know, primal movement is just the way that you know Jim and I and and some other people choose to describe it. But it's known as other things like animal locomotion, animal flow. Some people even call it natural movement because it's that idea of returning to how humans. Maybe even our ancestors moved, right? But yeah, Jim made a good point. So it's a shift away from bipedal movement, so things like walking, running, jumping, right, doing things on our legs, to focusing our attention to the floor or the ground. So quadrupedal movement, so moving on all fours, which, you know, is something that might seem like simple, but when you really start to engage, particularly when you're moving from one place to another on all fours, it's actually extremely difficult. And the idea of it being beneficial to the body is that you're really engaging multiple muscle groups at one time, right? So hum humans, we tend to have very stronger lower bodies, but our upper bodies have imbalances because we don't utilize them in the same way that we use our legs with the same level of frequency. Hmm. So, so humans became bipedal um, mm -hmm. be because I'm assuming, as, as you pointed out, um, it would free up the hands. I mean, you had the hunter-gatherer. It, it freed up their yep. hands for carrying and using tools, right? Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And as they migrated, um, you know, migrating from Siberia to different parts, uh, I guess, environmental, uh, to 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 different environments would necessitate uh, going bipedal as well, right? Right. Exactly. Okay. Yep. All right. I, I'm I'm there. I'm getting there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a slow learner, but I'm getting there. Yeah. All right, but, it makes but, sense. Even with, but even with that said, you know, the idea of, you know, the body is, is still very functional in, in that quadrupedal form. It's just, again, like Jim had mentioned, it's just something that we've sort of forgotten how to do. But our bodies can still remember it. You know, it might take a little bit of time to develop and practice to sort of build up those smaller muscle groups that we may not have be utilizing through contemporary exercise, but there is definitely a way to reconnect it. So am I, like, walking around on the floor? Uh, with hands and feet. Yeah, I mean that would be that would be a start of it. Okay. Um, I think you know you can scale it. I think most people, the way that I would uh, coach it, if I was working one on one with someone or in a group setting, I would start by having them on all fours. So kind of in a you know in, in yoga we call it you know the cat and cow position, which is where you you elongate the spine and then uh, retract it, creating a rounding in the back. Mm -hmm. And have them start in that position. And then gradually press into their palms and the balls of their feet to start to lift their knees off the floor, which is going to obviously engage your abdominals, your core muscles. Um, so for people, that would be a starting point, and I think most people would find that exceedingly difficult. And then, you know, the following movement after that would be to move in a um, homolateral way. So moving, say, the right arm forward and then the left leg, then the left arm form, uh, forward and then the right leg. Oh, okay, okay, yep. Vincent, can Does you make, make the distinction between um, uh, that and yoga? What's what? You know, it, it sounds yep. like a lot of the, the same motions of, of uh, yoga. So, what is the what is the difference? Do you want to speak to that, Jim? Yeah, I'll, I'll just speak quickly to that. That I've noticed that a lot of the yoga postures that we do and the animal or primal movements that we do are are extremely related. They're almost identical. The only difference. Being in many cases is that in the primal or animal movements we're moving, and in in yoga we sometimes call them postures or poses because we're just holding it still. Mm -hmm. But many of your listeners may be familiar with the downward dog, 
Uh, if you start to move the downward dog, moving your hands and your and your feet across the room or across the yard, we might call that the bear walk. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's it's a, a lot of the yoga postures that we would do on all fours. Oh. If you just start moving them, <laughs> you'll be doing uh, pretty much a, an animal movement. Wow! Wow! Now, is this is this a whole subspecialty, uh, or or is this um, I mean something that would get me more into uh, yoga, uh, or is this just you know um, part of the part of the whole picture? I'm going to say something yeah, I mean, pretty radical. I, I, I just really, I'll say this quickly, Vincent. I, I think if, if you started doing animal movements, you might not ever even bother with yoga. No kidding. Wow. Because it's the same. Because it's the same thing, as I was just saying. It's the same po- poses or postures mm-hmm. or positions, mm-hmm. but just in movement. So it really is yoga, but a, a lot of people won't necessarily recognize it these days as yoga. Am I getting the same mental acuity and the, the benefits from from the primal movement as I would be from yoga? As long as you're not on your cell phone while you're doing it, yeah. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, that kind of defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Well, if you do it outside, yeah. as Vincent was talking about earlier, it encourages you to do it outside because, uh, well, I, there's, there's this uh, other subset that, you, as you might call it, called grounding or earthing. I think Vincent and I have probably talked about this in prior yes. shows yep. where we're connecting directly with the earth receiving the, the negative ions that the earth gives off, which among other things helps to clear up free radicals in our body. It's just very enlivening to be touching the earth with bare feet, bare hands. Uh, so, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that, but uh, I wanted to make sure we, we got that in there. That there's Ooh. something really enlivening about doing these animal movements outside. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Um, are there are it, there primary animals that you're you know, trying to mimic their movements, or is it anything goes, look at me, I'm walking like a duck. Uh, you know, how is that, how, are there uh, <laughs> special animals? I mean, you already mentioned, you know, monkeys or or whatever, but what else you got? Yeah, so it's, and, I mean, it really goes across the spectrum, Greg, and I think, um, you know, depend depending on what school of thought, because there are, like, different branches or subsets, and different kind of patented practices that people have developed over time, different types of systems. And uh, they each sort of engage, you know, a few of the main sort of ones, kind of like the bear walk Jim was talking about. Another one would be um, like the snail, which is where you walk yourself out to a plank position, then walk your feet back into a forward fold position. That would be another one that kind of goes across all the spectrum and systems. But they have different names for them. So, but I mean, across the board, you know, the movements are the same. They just might have a different name. Someone might call something a bear walk, and another person might call it, you know, some some kind of different animal name. But yeah, but it does. It does incorporate a lot of different spectrums from the animal kingdom, and that's something I like about it. Wow. It's kind of unique, and I think animal mimicry is something that humans have embodied for a long time, and a lot of our ancestors do that. Did that, you know, when we were in tribal cultures, and there's something, something powerful about connecting you know to the animal species and mm-hmm. recognizing that we're not separate from them we too are animals so yeah that's cool um Vincent, and just to connect uh, to connect yoga and animal movement once again a lot of the yoga poses are animal names uh, some yeah. of them are things like trees but anything in nature really was fair game the True. early yogis oh that makes sense uh vincent artisone yes artisone yep artisone reedy and lassard are going to be back. It sounds like a law firm. Oh, no, it, it? it does. It really does. Uh, or a lobbying group. It does. I like that. Uh, but yes, <laughs> Artisone, Reedy, and Lassard back right after this. From a, from a from a, uh, a an individual standpoint, is primal movement a hard sell? I mean, yoga for some people, okay, yeah, I kind of get it. There's a a history, a tradition. There's a sensibility about it. But primal movement, walking like a you know, walking like a monkey, walking like a caveman, is that a harder sell? So I, I try um, to weave it into my yoga classes where yeah. folks are already doing uh, things that are resembling the primal movement. Mm-hmm. So it's I, sometimes I won't even call it animal movement because it's just a natural extension of yoga. So okay. to a yoga audience, probably not a really hard sell. Mm-hmm. But I'm not even trying to sell it. In my life, I'm just I'm just using it because it's so natural. It feels good. I have found, I think Vincent has found this too, when you 
show somebody how to do this, and they do it, it sells itself. Okay. Yeah. I can't really yeah. sell it with can't sell it with words so easily. But right. If, if I, that makes know, sense. Again, it. movement yeah. works. Hey, Greg, when's when's the rotisserie chicken going up? Uh, today available at 9 a.m. They're cooking it off uh, right at now as we speak, and so 9 a.m. it's out there. ConcordFoodCoop dot co-op. Vincent, Jim, Greg, as always. Thanks, guys. If you're in the mood for real food, it's Concord Food Co-op.